It took a whole week to be able to do this discussion, but here we are. This is the true breakdown for YCS Bogota 2022. Come back 30% of you guys have not smashed the living crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so we can get to 105,000. So some of you guys remember in the week, we did a half partial breakdown for what was out of Bogota because there was just a lot of information missing in in between. Well, we finally have the full breakdown for this, which is what I want to discuss today because I love like looking at this raw data and just seeing, you know, the turnovers and changes in the game. So highest represented deck on top 32, to nobody's surprise here, is Despia slash Branded. Oh boy. Now I think the most interesting thing out of this is we there are two variants that we don't know. So I wanna, you know, disclose that info here. Be like, yes, we are missing two for that. But there was eight adventure variants versus two pure variants. Now I think the thing that's most interesting about this was everybody at the very beginning stages was dogging on the adventure package inclusion in this deck. But it looks like, at least out of YCS, we'll go to here as we head on to Mexico this week here, we might see a shift in terms of that. But that is huge, all right? Just a general impact here for a YCS having the adventure package, you know, turning over that many heads in this is definitely interesting. I do think it is kind of important, though, that, like, that engine does pretty much roll out Rogue really, really hard and hinders Rogue from really getting the chance to do anything. So Despi already being like the powerhouse it is, can take advantage of that package and kind of grind out the rest of the metagame. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty intriguing there. Now, we also had eight Praying Kids variants, and I do think the Praying Kids is still the second best deck in the room. Oh, Shoki Darn, look at these results. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me at all. Four of those were the Adventure Package. Yeah, I'm not surprised about that either. That deck was the go-to for so long. We also had three Adventure DPs, so three of those builds. We're also playing the DP Package. Oh, they're all Adventurer Praying Kids. <laughs> yeah. And then one was a 60-card Adventurer DP. So four of those builds played DP, and then eight of them <laughs> were all playing the Adventurer stuff. You know, I've, I've seen very little of the pure variants for praying kids i think man even like before despia they did exist they were a little bit far in between yes but it's it's really disheartening to see that now eldritch here actually had the third highest representation for this which is pretty interesting. All right, so shout out to Eldlich here. You had one branded adventurer deck. So this is gonna, I believe we covered that list earlier in the week where you saw that this deck was able to kind of take the power of, you know, 60 carding itself out of its existence here and doing its job. It's a cute little deck. I, I really like what that version of the deck brings to the table, um, but I don't know, I'll have to wait and see if it's going to maintain like some sort of semblance. I don't know, I, I do know that like the branded version without the adventure stuff functions about as well. Uh, it's just however much more little spice you want to put into that. We also had one Cyverse Adventurer. Yes, the Cyverse deck is still doing well, ladies and gentlemen, and that's a good thing, all right? That deck had, honestly, like the Scythlock at this point in time is getting bullied off of the charts, and I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of happy to see that Scythe is uh, falling off, but you can think like the rest of the power scaling in the format uh, it, does the game feel faster than what Scythe is able to stop? Because it's kind of what it almost feels like at this point in time. So we had double branded, one Cyverse, and then one Pure. So, haha, -ha, you can go ahead and sit all the skill drains in the world. Uh, one interesting thing about one of the branded lists, though, we did see that it was playing skill drains in the deck, which means it doesn't care what the opponent's going to do. I mean, hell, man. You can fire a Mirror Jade underneath you know, your guy. It sends and does what it wants to do. Thank you, Mirror Jade shenanigans, but plus it like, it's graveyard, uh, or it's floating effect to nuke the field at the end of the turn. Yeah, pretty good. Only two flunder in top cut. <laughs> uh, you know the best part about this, about seeing flunder getting reduced numbers, it's all, or it's all the fault of Brandon. Because the whole, you, you know, you're not seeing this in every single list, but Zombie World Necro Banshee being droppable off of the branded fusion 
changed Flunder's perspective on the game and just hurt this deck so damn much. All right, like it's actually really sad to see how much Flunder has hurt. Now, is Flunder disappearing off of the map? No, not by any stretch of the imagination. I actually think it's pretty good to see that Flunder still maintaining. Remember, this deck does become more budget friendly once Ghost from the Past enters into the fray here when Mega Rise is gonna look way more affordable. And, you know, we did talk about you can play Pot of Extraps in the deck because you don't need those Pot of Prosperities, right? Pot of Prosperity is like the luxury item, and you can just play the discount Pot of Extravagance to generate that advantage. But uh, the sole reason why Flunder is just not doing well right now at all is because Despia's reign at the top is just preventing it from doing so. Hi, Zombie World! Oh, and by the way, it's the... neither Your, your opponent cannot tribute summon effect on Zombie World. For those of you guys who are like, well, they, they, they're zombies. Like, what's it matter? It's, they can't tribute. All right, then we had one adventure of Dragon Link. Dragon Link is really, 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 like, have you guys, like, seen? Dragon Link is just getting bullied as of late. Like, holy crap. That poor deck is struggling so much as of late. Um, I want to just tell all of you Dragon Link players out there, you get Boral and Dragon, and then Despia gets their full contact fusion against you. Um, if you're out here, and you're a Dragon Link player, and you're like, yes, finally, I'm going to get Boral in in a week. Um, I think you're too damn late. Like, I'm sorry to say this. I, I think, unfortunately, we are at the point of uh, just... No recoverability for this deck. I actually think we might see Dragon Link kind of start to push it down a little bit in terms of its representation here soon, which is actually really sad because that deck has been around for so long. But I mean, look at Invoked. Power Creep naturally has to happen eventually here. We also had one adventure of Phantom Knight DP. You know, <laughs> speaking of Dragon Link, you know, talking about consistency, Phantom Knight. Uh, Phantom Knight's been a big issue with itself as of late. But, I mean, once again, Scythlock is still going to get some people. All right? There's there's no reason why it's 100% totally cut out of the format yet, because it's not. All right? It still is there, and it still can take people off guard. So, I think that's definitely one other thing to mention here is, like, yeah, the format is, like, very top-heavy here, but decks can still do scythe shenanigans like we haven't forgot about it all right we also had one adventurer sky striker dp guess what the adventurer package is being used to make verte anaconda which then we're using to expedite the process to perform a link summon ah uh, you know one thing i've noticed about these lower tier decks is it's all verte anaconda's fault and you know the sadder thing is brandon doesn't give two crabs about verte verte's like Oh no, anyway, <laughs> it's just like a contingency plan and a contingency plan at that. We also had the one Rave Drafter list. We looked at that earlier in the week. Honestly, I'm happy to see that that deck did perform up to standards. It is good to see a Rogue Buster deck getting into Top Cut here, but it was just that. It was nothing that really changed or warped the perception. I honestly just think it was a one-off uh, for this event. So unfortunately, yeah, it's it's... I want to be more optimistic for it, but I don't think it's going to happen again. We also had one ten year sword soul. You notice, you notice how bad sword soul has been bullied out of the top cuts at these events. Like the deck is still very good and it's still doing well at regional levels, but I don't know. It's 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 turning into like the unsung hero that we kind of we want to see, but it's just having a bad time. Speaking of unsung heroes, Tri Brigade Lyricalisk all the way down here. I'll give it up. We thought the try had just disappeared. I mean, we've seen branded try doing things, but like it didn't perform up to standard for Bogota. So it was nice to see that try, at least in its former shell, could compete with this. So what did this YCS teach us? Once again, it taught us that branded has so many forms in things that it can mess around with. It's actually insanity. All right. It taught us that, yeah, praying kids are still sitting at the dinner table, maintaining their dominance as the second best deck. And it's once again showing us that Eldlich decided that it wanted to undergo another evolution. We no real shocker here. So what do you guys think about the YCS Pagoda Breakdown? Please leave a comment below. Make sure you guys say make sure you smash the subscribe button, that subscribe button. This is almost more awesome content. I'll see your beautiful faces back here later in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons! Thank you!
Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.